Welcome to the SVK Media Network. We are super excited about today's show. Yes, <laughs> it says it on the screen there. Saputo's in the house. So we are, you know what? Today's about specialty cheese, and I'm blown away by how many kinds of cheeses there are out there. And uh, we have this amazing Jeff. I know he's kind of walking back and forth there on the in the green room, but do I want to welcome Chef Chris to the show? I'm Saputo, Chef Chris. Going, you know what? <laughs> We're, we are having a great day today, and I'm excited about learning about specialty cheese. And I think you've got some pretty cool recipes and ideas for us. Uh, yeah, we're going to do some cool things with some really cool cheeses. Uh, we're going to start off by making some uh, mocktails. And uh, people are like, what? Uh, why are you making a mocktail when we're talking cheese? Well, I, I don't see any reason why cheese shouldn't belong in a beverage. Uh, I mean, there's there's sweet beverages and there's savory beverages, and when they're savory, mm -hmm. they're great with cheese. Uh, and uh, in our, you know, it's February. People are a lot of people are are uh, observing a dry February or a dry January extended. So we want we thought why not do a little segment about some mocktail options using all the specialty cheeses to really elevate them and bring them. Uh, bring them to you know restaurant quality drinks. Yeah, because you don't typically see cheese with drinks and things like this, so I'm kind of excited about this idea. Yeah, it's a cool idea. I mean, I, why not, right? <laughs> cheese is pretty good everywhere. Yeah. Uh, if you got a cocktail where it's or a mocktail where it's a uh, where it's appropriate, why not throw that in there just to you know add that uniqueness to it. Yeah, you know what? It's probably got it. Probably maybe come to that like you're going to do a Caesar, I think here, yeah. and I think the cheese offsets a little bit of that salt, maybe because I, I like salt and cheese. Yeah, kind of a little salt balance, uh, just to you know, it, salt's usually a good addition to a savory cocktail. So that, that's uh, that's kind of the idea there. We're also going to get into a charcuterie board. Uh, we'll do some uh, some work with a cheese tower and uh, some crostinis, which are a great fit for specialty cheeses. So. Lots of fun stuff to cover off today. That is, well, that's awesome. So we'll run a quick commercial and then let's get into this, into this Caesar or into these drinks, as, as we say. I'm excited about it, but we're going to run this quick commercial of um, Saputo's unboxing. So we'll be right back with Chef. chef all right some nice looking <laughs> i know hey like how many different there's gonna be like millions of different kinds of cheeses out there so many yeah kinds. well the first one's uh pretty cool this is a uh i've already garnished the glass with it as you can see here this is a yeah my caesar uh, glass but i've got a i call it a charcuterie skewer we've got grilled halloumi and some grilled <laughs> sausage on there with uh olives and some tomatoes just grilled and then you can add, you can keep that at the bar or uh, grill them to order if you've got a little portable grill. Uh, here we've got a non-alcohol uh, non version of gin. So I'm gonna do uh, a gin version. Did you, did you, you got a non-alcohol version of gin? That's pretty good. There's cool. a lot of really cool non-alcohol uh, spirits on the market these days. Uh, and I think it's really cool. I've tried a, a, all of them. Well, not all of them, a good number of them. And they're yeah. surprisingly authentic flavor. Yeah. Just like zero alcohol. So you can uh, still get and enjoy uh, the Caesars and the, the martinis and all the cocktails that you've come to, you know, love without having to worry about uh, your, uh, you know, if you're trying to follow a dry January or a dry Feb oh. or anything like that or making some better choices for uh, just in general. This is a great way to, to fill that void. So... Caesar's 
probably the quintessential Canadian drink. Uh, it's really uh, one of the things that we're famous for. And uh, I obviously have some Clamato here that uh, made in Vancouver, really good product. Uh, mixed it with some uh, of that non-alk gin. And there we go. So with a charcuterie skewer and some nice uh, pickled beans in there, really great way to have that flavor that y'all enjoy first thing on a Sunday morning. <laughs> or on a Saturday really night. Or a Saturday night. Right so now, what kind of cheese was that again? What kind of cheese was that again? So that's the uh, halloumi cheese. Halloumi is a cheese that's uh, originates from Cyprus uh, in the Mediterranean. It's famous for its ability to be to be grilled or cooked or pan seared without losing or melting and losing any of its uh, shape. So it's fantastic. It gets better when it's warmed. It softens. It, uh, the flavors mellow out a little bit. Uh, it's, it's quite a squeaky texture in your mouth. Really quite cool uh, and unique. But the, just having the, the ability to grill it just makes it quite special for me anyway. So there, there's that. Uh, you know, you can put whatever you want on the skewer. You could just do cheese. You could just add, you know, the kitchen sink when it comes to whatever you put on your Caesar. I know some restaurants go nuts with what they want uh, to garnish their drinks with. For me, that's nice and simple, yet very unique. And uh, Now, no, Chef, does the halloumi cheese, is there? Is it salty or what's, yes. it, what's, what's the texture like? Because I'm, I'm curious by this product. Uh, yeah, well, the textures, it's a its a semi-firm cheese. It's actually classified, uh, I wouldn't say semi-firm, but uh, maybe even just a firm cheese. Okay. Uh, quite salty. Like I said, that squeak is, is the really unique characteristics that it has. And then, uh, uh, yeah, it's got a fairly sharp overall flavor. I, I use it a lot of times as a, uh, as a substitute for a burger. If you want to do like a, a vegetarian burger, you can do yeah, yeah, yeah. cheese burger it's a burger made from cheese really so a lot more you so you can make a burger out of this product yeah pretty cool hey eh? no way all right so the next drink i'm going to make is a uh, a basil infused martini so again with the uh with the gin and then some fresh basil i'm just going to muddle that with a little bit of blueberry cheese yeah the cheese is going right in there so of course, muddling is just uh, smashing up the. Uh, sometimes it's done with mint or other herbs, but you're smashing the leaves to extract the oils and the flavor out into your uh, liquid. Now, now, chef, is this blue cheese? The, is it a like a brie cheese and a blue cheese together? Is that kind of what it I, is? Uh, we're gonna get into that in a little more detail when we go and do the uh, the cheese board. Because it's okay. there. But yeah, it's a it's one of our specialty cheeses. It is a mixture of blue and brie, hence the name blueberry cheese. Oh, okay. Very cool product as it's the uh, it is a blue cheese, but it's it, well it's a brie cheese, but it's got the blue veins in it. So yeah, cool mix of the two. Now I do recall because you know I late at night I read about cheese and I do all these great things because I love cheese so much. Yeah. This won the 2022 Silver International yeah. Cheese and Dairy Award. Is that right? It's right. Yeah. Most of these cheeses that we're covering today have won an award one way or another. No so, way. You know what? I'm looking at this on our, on our notes. You're right. Pardon me? You're right. We're, we're, in, we're, in, we're in presence of greatness when it comes to cheese. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so beautiful basil flavors coming out on that. What's it smell like, Chef? Give me that smell. Give me that smell. Tell me what it smells like because that basil's got to be good. Oh. It smells like the fresh basil garden. Yeah, it smells good, though, I'm sure. So there we go. Really cool cocktail. Mocktail, sorry. Again, so just non out gin. I'm just going to throw a little garnish on there. I've got a grape tomato that I hollowed out and stuffed it with the blueberry okay. cheese and wrapped it in a basil leaf. Nice. nice little way to finish that cocktail off. And there we go. Number two. Number two. So I I've used pop have you ever heard of popper dews? They're kind of like a tomato, but they're red and they're like a pepper. We used to stuff yeah. cheese into them as yeah. well. Yeah, that's, that's a cool idea, actually. Yeah. 
right. One final mocktail to do. One okay, here we go. So this is a uh, old fashioned mocktail version of an old fashioned. Uh, I've got some liars, Highland malt, quote unquote whiskey, not whiskey, but I'll tell you what, it sure tastes like it. And it's <laughs> unalcoholic. It's it blew, no, my, I serious? blew my mind. Absolutely. Uh, so I'll just start with a little Demerara sugar. Uh, what was so sorry? What was that sugar, Chef? Sorry, I missed that. Demerara. Demerara sugar. <laughs> Say that four times quick. No, not, a, not at all. Not at all. Gonna rinse off my muddler here. And what else did you put in there? What was the last of, one? So like, it's like an Angostura bitters. It's an old fashioned, okay. but it's a non-alcoholic version. Once again. Uh, these products are harder to find, but they are available. Uh, bitters is generally, uh, it has some alcohol in it, but you can find bitters that is alcohol free. It still has all the same flavors. So that's uh, your sugar and your bitters in there. And one thing I always like to do when I'm making an old fashioned is use the, the right ice cube. Oh, it just flew out at me there. So a nice big cube. I have learned so much about those big ice cubes, how important they are. It is important. I mean, it, it helps to, uh, to keep the ice from melting. It gets your drink cold, but it doesn't water it down. And that's Yeah. Really Who thought that many years that we figured that out later on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Two ounces of our pretend whiskey. Just give that a little stir. What's the aroma? Give me aroma. Give me the oh, aroma. It, it's amazing. So you've yeah. got smoke, a little bit of peat. You've got, uh, you know, all the sweet and rich herbaceousness of the uh, of the bitters. And then uh, finish it off with a, a nice little cherry. And cheese. And cheese. Wow. Yeah. So what did you do there? What's that cheese? It looks oh, wait, different. Wait a minute. I almost forgot about the most exciting step. I want to smoke this cocktail. So I've got a little smoking kit here. It's something new that I've gotten into is uh, adding smoke. Really? So it's just a little sieve here. Put in a little bit of wood chips in there. Torch them. Yeah, this is huge now, eh? Just want to get that going. And that's see, it? That's it. Now the smoke actually is heavier than air, so you can see it kind of, I don't know if it comes up well on the camera or not. Sure, lift it up. Lift it up so you can see. But you can see the smoke actually, cut. there's yeah, no, yeah. no wood, and it's actually pouring down. And if you just let that sit for a minute or two, it'll penetrate into the drink and, and the liquid. So you have a, uh, a smoky, smoky, delicious drink to have. And what's better with whiskey than smoke, right? And actually, what you know, year, what, Chef, what year was the old fashioned made? Oh, that's a long time ago. You're going to stump me on that one. But a, a lot of people will argue that that is the original cocktail. Um, it predates all other drinks. And, uh, you know what? There's some there's some controversy on this drink. There's like 19 or sorry, 1833, 1806, 1883, I think as well here. So yeah, I love that. That must smell good though. It must just be so good. So that's so now let's let's bring that into the cheese conversation. So that's I've never had whiskey and cheese before, Chef. But is that is that something that's got to be great flavors? It's like. You can buy flavors together. Divert a little bit and make you yeah. connect, connect the dots for you. Okay. Well, something that pretty much everybody on the planet likes that's salty, smoky, and sweet. You have it with your eggs in the morning. Yeah. Bacon. So it's with a B, right? Yeah. <laughs> salty, okay. smoky, and sweet. Yeah. Beautiful. So why not add a little cheese to your mocktail to add that salty element? And also the onion. Uh. Okay. I like Follow that. Me. I like that. Yeah, I got it. it. Okay. Got it. Got it. There you go. We've got three very interesting mocktails to throw on your, uh, your menu, to throw on your, your belly. Uh, 
uh, there's the old fashioned with the cheese. Yep. So this is a, just a baked cheese um, twill. And then here's our basil blue cheese martini with the blueberry cheese. And then of course the, uh, the old favorite, the Caesar with the charcuterie skewer. Good fun. Love it. Love it, chef. Love awesome. it. So All we're right. going to come back. We're going to break. You're going to get ready for your next cheese board, right? Yep. Cheese board and crostinis. We're going to go cheese board and crostinis, which is kind of interesting. I'm kind of curious about that. But we'll right back. You only got 30 seconds. You better hurry. Oh, man. Here we go. Just <laughs> here, we, here we go. We're right back. That was it, Chef. Just like that, boom. Yeah. Still moving, but I'm there. Just, just still, you're still cleaning. Yeah. Cool. You're still cleaning. All right. Clean. So we're gonna do cheese board. Well, we're gonna do crostinis first. Okay. Do the cheese board. That's so what's the, what's the, what's the best crostini out there? Like bread? Because I never know what to grab at the store. Baguette. Baguette. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Hey. That's it. That's it. Don't so buy do the pre box ones, or do you buy the pre box ones, or what do you do? Well, you know, it depends how fancy you want to be. I, I like to make my own because then you yeah. have over thickness and cook time and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the box ones, they're pretty convenient and help you out in a pinch if you're looking to just speed up things a bit. But yeah, you want a nice, like this is a French baguette. So it's a very small diameter. That's what I like to stick with. Do you Ideally, butter it anything, chef, or put oil on it? Or? A little bit of olive oil, just spray it on before it goes okay. in the oven. And then you can add a little seasoning if you like. Uh, generally, I just keep it pretty pretty blank canvas so that you can mm -hmm. let the, the ingredients do the talking. So we're going to feature uh, four different cheeses, four different crostinis, and this is come. They all come out of our specialty cheese box. So we've got the uh, the Cendrillon, which I'll get into in a bit, uh, Soularier, uh, the Blueberry, and the Sandre de Lune. All of these are award winning cheeses. They'll be prepared they in are. a simple way, just so that we can basically have the cheese with an accompaniment and a garnish and that's it. You don't need more than that because you want the cheese to do the talking. Well, I, I was going to say this and he, here's the thing that I, you know, I, I put my hat on for the restaurateur and the chef out there. Why would you not be using award winning cheese? Like to me, that just adds so much value to your menu exactly. and your offering that like right there, I would just use that it, it, on the menu award winning cheese. You, it's, it's the facts and people Google it or they'll do what I'm doing and yeah. they'll learn about it. And I think that adds such a nice story to your menu and to either a cheese board or even add it into like a sandwich or into a meal, adding that world classification of winning like an award that big, that's huge. <gasps> so, yeah, it, and the, the answer is a question in itself. Like, I'm not sure why people don't use these more more frequently because they are incredible products. Uh, maybe it's just people are not familiar with them yet. So um, that could be the, one of the reasons. Uh, and I mean, from a restaurant's point of view, certainly uh, as I think of my, my past years as a chef, they're packaged so conveniently and fairly, you know, you can buy that specialty cheese box that has all of the cheeses in it, one-stop shop kind of thing. And they're all fairly small uh, wheels, as you probably noticed, I'm putting them together. So this really helps you to uh, facilitate, you know, these kinds of ingredients without having massive quantities on hand at all the time. You, you have a smaller amount on hand that's more manageable. All so, right. Yeah. So chef, chef, we have a we have a surprise guest. Oh, who's that? <laughs> the cheese Rocco cheese guy is here. All right. So we can't turn his camera on, and he can only hear us. So Rocco, welcome to the show. There. Rocco, can Rocky you there? I'm here. There, he there is. you are. There you are. Yeah, we can hear you. Ah, oh, sorry. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Well, that's all right. No, no, that's that happens. Don't worry about that. We are talking cheese, Rocco, and I have like a million questions here about Chef puts these dishes together. 
But we were okay. just talking about the importance of using a lot of these award-winning cheeses on your menus. I see major value. Have you come across this where people use those like uh, you know classifications or those awards on their menus um, to increase it, some value? It is uh, definitely it, when you, when you can showcase the fact that. Um, so here's an example of what happened way back in 2009. Um, we uh, entered our uh, our cheese, uh, and you'll see it later when when uh, Chef Chris does the uh, the uh, cheese boards. Um, the Cendrillon, um, a, a cheese that was very, I don't, I want to say that hardly any people, anybody heard of the product. It actually won world's best cheese in 2009 at the World Cheese Awards event, wow. and um, we were not able to keep up with that cheese ever since we got the accolade. Wow. So, 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 Rocco, can you just step back just a little bit on this award thing? What is an award? Like, how do you get an award for winning cheese out there? Because that's, like, I'm blown away, first of all. But I just, I want to learn about that. Is there a process? Do you have to submit it? Do, is there, is there like, a, you know, like a thing that you guys go to that they check the cheese out? Like, how do you get that classification? Well, I, I believe award? There, we are able to submit uh, any cheese that we, um, in, and they're all done by category. So there, you don't just throw okay. in a goat cheese and it gets... And it gets competing against uh, just cheese in general. There are different categories, so there'll be one for goat, there'll be one for uh, oh, okay. um, hard cheese, and uh, you submit whatever you are looking for in terms of uh, your offering, um, and they get um, they get um, judged on that. Oh, wow! And there's got to be a lot to submit. Like this is oh, not just like five. There's got to be. A lot of because the cheese is so big, and when you, I, I do believe, and I, I'm, I'm new to this. It's got to be a serious competition in a way to get that. Do you guys won world? Like, there's no one better than this cheese in this category. Yeah. It's crazy. No, and but then you got also remember too, like okay, I mean, you, when you look at uh, Saputo and all our offerings, there are other cheese companies out there, and many of them, and their offerings. So, um, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> Just to, just to keep it in perspective, even something on a small scale where, you know, going through a cheese course and you're sampling uh, all these cheeses, um, you know, when you get through four, five, six of them at one at one sitting, uh, I don't know about you, I, I love cheese, but then you get to the point where you're just like saturated. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't taste anything, right? Anymore. Yeah. And, and I don't know if that's ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's see if I can show <laughs> That never happens, Chef. Not okay. Yeah. I can't really tip it. Oh, you know what I could do to help tip it? Just hold on to oh, these. Are you going to get fancy there? So right right down here, we've got the La Cendrillon with some Manuka honey and the fresh thyme. Uh, down now, why honey, Chef? Why honey? Why honey? It's just it's just a pairing that goes really Does well. Does it go good? Okay. La Cendrillon is the one that Rocco spoke of earlier. It's an ash rind. Uh, surface ripened goat's cheese uh, and world's best cheese so worth a try uh, down here i've got the blueberry with a date compote and some green onions the blueberry is the one we had in the cocktail yeah and then we have uh sandra de lune with some microgreens and apricot chutney and then sir laurier with some smoked salmon lox and uh cumin seed so a great little uh snacky thing to pass around as an hors d'oeuvre or a starter um you know, it's a little yeah. fitting to do these kinds of things. That's why I like to keep it simple with just three ingredients on each crostini. You got your cheese, your garnish, and your your, your uh, pairing, uh, and you know, one bite sort of thing. So now, chef, if I'm ordering that in a restaurant, is that am I going to eat a certain cheese first out of those selections, or do I? Is is there like a process? Eat this one first, and then this one, and then this one, or do I just go all? That's it. That's a great question. And uh, yeah, you tend to want to start with the milder cheeses first so your palate's not blown on the first bite. Uh, with those ones, they're all pretty, you know, they're on the mild side. So those ones aren't as, you know, critical. But, you know, when you're building a charcuterie board, that's something you definitely want to be a little more mindful okay. of, is, is making sure that you have a good selection of cheeses from each category and from, uh, you know, the flavor and body standpoint. So, uh, I'm going to move into the charcuterie board now, and for this one, I'm going to have uh, four cheeses on it. 
Uh, we're going to have the bocconcini, which is obviously a, uh, a, a soft cheese. So, or sorry, no, that's a semi-firm cheese. I always get that one mixed up. Okay. Soft cheeses are your brie's and your camemberts. So, oh, I got lots of questions here, chef, on this one. Okay, cool. And yeah. then uh, rock will prepare yourself. Pacific rock cheddar that's going to go on here, as well as some cantonier. So that that covers all of our different categories of cheeses from. Uh, soft, semi-soft, firm, and hard. And then also from a color point of view, we've got a variety of colors and a variety of, of strengths. Like the Pacific Rock is considered a strong cheese. Oof. Le Bonaparte is a, soft, is a mild cheese. The Bacchini is very mild. The Cantonier is kind of medium. So you want to have a little bit of everything and just kind of look after, you know, let people experiment with their palates and their combinations. So I, want, I have a question for Ro Rocco Shuffle. You get, get prepared there. Rocco, now the one cheese here, it says that, you got to tell me about this because I'm, I'm curious about this. This is vegetable ashed covered. What is yeah. that? Is What so, is that? Like well, Basically what, what it is, is just, it is a, an assortment of charred vegetables. So it's, it's, it is edible. It's not something that you need to try and scrape off the cheese. And it does add a very... Um, uh, distinctive component to the cheese. So uh, if you were to look at uh, one of the items that uh, Chef Chris used in the uh, pre in, when he was making the um, the crostini, the Sondre de Lune, I mean, that's a triple cream brie. So when you when you look at a triple cream brie, you've got, you know, that high milk fat, you got that nice buttery uh, overall flavor in the product. But then you got that uh, distinctive black um a contrast to the cheese on the outside mm. uh and if you were to consume that with the, with the ash you get a very nice like sharpness to it you get a little bit of a bite mm. so for people who are like you know uh you know triple cream brie yeah that's great it's just a little bit too bland for me this takes it up a notch to that where to the point where you are actually able to enjoy the product and it's and it just adds a, a completely another component to the overall flavor profile of the of the cheese and again it's just derived from charred vegetables so um it is you know, something that is completely edible and nothing that you have to be concerned in the sense of you know am i able to eat this and this yeah, talk, does no. it also affect the aging of the cheese and the speed of which it's aged um i think well the, the one thing that you will see is that once uh if you're letting that product sit um, and, and unfortunately, I don't have that experience because I don't let I don't let my cheese sit for too long. Um, it does add um, a, a little bit more of a like crust to the product, a little bit more firmer um, texture to the product as well. Now, I have a question for you because now, Chef, in the video it shows a specialty box. Are these the cheeses in the specialty box that Spotos has? has? Uh, for the uh, Christini sampler, yes. That, yeah. was, uh, that was cheeses exclusively from the specialty box. Uh, How many cheeses come in that box? There's six. I used four. Okay. okay. So, but that, uh, very handy for, for restaurants, so they don't have to bring in huge cases of each cheese, right? Well, yeah. Well, that that's, that's what I was getting at. It's kind of, you know, it allows you to have one skew on your order guide. Yeah. And also to... Uh, uh, enable you to, you know, keep your products more fresh because they're smaller wheels, so you're not worried about product going off. So yeah, that's a really handy, uh, handy way to get your cheese for sure. Now, now Rocco, this other cheese—it's one that bronze. You guys took like the whole, the whole podium here. I'm noticing in 2022, is that you guys won the bronze, you won the silver. Now the one here, it does talk about uh, buttery flavors. And Chef mentioned high fat. Is it similar where we see high fat in a lot of food that typically has huge flavor profiles? Is that is that normal for cheese? Um, well, um, it, the the cheese actually uh, gets its flavor from from the milk fat. So, okay. um, what the more like when you're talking like butter, like a, a product that is buttery, I mean that you get that actually from you know if you think of butter on its own, it does have that high milk fat in it so it's very rich um and those kind of tones come out when you are producing it with um uh, with the milk okay I've, I've got more questions coming here now 
chef on the I think it was this Pacific Rock cheese you have there. Yeah. I saw you had to put a little little bit of leverage into that cutting it. Is that yeah. because there's a there's a rind? Am I saying that right? A it's rind just, around the cheese, or it's just a firm cheese. It's just a firm cheese. Okay. Yeah. yeah so the one the one thing that uh, to note about that Pacific Rock, it is aged six months before we actually put it out to the consumers. So no way, I, six months. Six months. Yeah. So that's why you get that hard <sighs> texture on the outside, uh, very much like uh, you would. Uh, I mean, you think of like the Parmesan wheels where they're aged for 24 months, perhaps that you get that hard crust on the outside. So, yeah, there is you are going to need a little bit of strength in order to cut through that product. Now, can you eat that crust like there's nothing wrong? I always have this question. I know. No, oh, it, it's it, uh, on that particular product, I would probably say steer away from it because okay. um, there there is some like a, it would really uh, change the pr- flavor profile on that product. You want to taste that interior. You got that that little bit of nuttiness, that nice creaminess in the product, um, and that's what you get from the interior. Perfect. Now, now, chef, I have to ask questions of Bocchini. Okay. I have so many questions because I always go into the store and I want to buy it, but yeah. I don't know. Like, does it go like as soon as you crack it open? Do you have to use it right away? Because it's usually in like some sort of solution. Yeah. Do you keep brine. it in the solution in the brine? Do you keep it in the brine? Yeah. Where do you take it uh, out? Like, how do you use this product? I'm, I'm fascinated by it because I love the taste. It's it's cool. Uh, it's considered a uh, semi-soft cheese. Uh, and, uh, yes, it is because of the brine. It, uh, but the, well, not because of the brine. You, you should keep it in the brine because that's going to keep it from drying out and also allow it to stay fresher in your fridge. Okay. It doesn't have a terrifically long shelf life like some cheeses. Uh, okay. Just because it's not cured. And uh, so, yeah, you do need to use it fairly, fairly soon after you purchase it. But it, it's one of those cheeses that goes everywhere. It's pretty neutral flavored, mild, uh, wonderful texture. And uh, I, I, I wouldn't see a problem getting through a, a case of Boccaccini any day. Uh, similar to mozzarella fresca in that it's, uh, it's a stretch form cheese. And you can see also, if you're looking at the charcuterie board, which is almost done, I yeah. just tore the bocconcini up. I didn't cut it, and that's. Uh, I did that hey, no, no, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. A minute. You did what? Because it looks cool. It's like you just ripped it apart. I just rip it apart, and what that allows you to do is you can see all the little, all the strands of the cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of a, a cool presentation point for me, on the cheese. It's called the pasta filana method, where you're stretching the cheese and yep. bring it over and stretching it. And that's what makes mozzarella so stringy. Uh, so in this case, Boccaccini, same process, same uh, pasta filata method. So you see that the curd stretches uh, in the cheese when you rip it apart. If you just slice it, you don't see that. And I, I think that's an important way to present your cheese is showing, you know, the, that method that's been done to, to achieve that. So there you go. That's why I did that. Now, now chef, because you've been doing the chef and thing for a while. Yeah. What, what kind of meats would go good with this cheese? Like, are, are we looking at what kind of meats you got there? Okay. Like, well, good question. That's a great, yeah. and, you know, that's the follows the same kind of path of thinking that you would use for your cheeses in that you're going to want to select cheese or select meats that are uh, soft and then some that are firm, some that are strong, some that are mild. So that you have that variety. So in this case, I've gone with good old prosciutto, which always finds its way onto a charcuterie board for me. Uh, and then I've got some salami here, which is obviously harder and stronger flavored, and then a nice mm-hmm. mild um, beer sausage there as well. So you kind of cover all your bases, and that way you allow people to kind of play around with what they what they like and find their own uh, flavor combinations that work for them. Is there a rule, like... Eat the cheese, then the meat, then the meat, the cheese, like, and then throw in a grape. People there's no, like, no rule? There's, there's no need to complicate things with rules when it comes to that. I don't know. I get nervous. I get the, all this different stuff coming to me. I don't know what I should eat first. No, Because I'm, I'm just going to go to the cheese, to be honest. Uh, just just have fun and, and enjoy it. Uh, you know, that's it, it's funny how charcuterie, not, I guess it wasn't too long ago, maybe five, six years ago, all you could hear, nobody knew how to even say it, let alone 
find it on the internet. <laughs> this is weird That's word. so oh, true. And all of a sudden, it's everywhere, and it's everybody's buzzword these days. Oh, charcuterie boxes. Ah, oh, so true, though, right? It's really something that Ooh. caught on, and it's not going anywhere. It's especially now that we're post COVID and into more of a uh, open up uh, kind of restaurant dining atmosphere. This is the kind of food that people will go back to to, to share and to enjoy in, in each other's company. Uh, so why not uh, get back into that? Very cool. So what's that? That's just that? like microgreens. That's okay. just a, it's just a color thing. Now, Chef, do you see a lot of charcuterie boards out in the Vancouver area there? You got yeah, you gotta be everywhere. Oh yeah, they're they're nuts. It's everybody's doing one. If you're not, you're you're silly. Uh, but I think um, it, it's one of those things that a lot of people will will find them they find their way onto a dessert menu for whatever reason. And for me, oh this, okay. This is like cheese board's kind of that dessert concept, but for me. I don't have this anytime. This is a great starter. This is a great way to open your meal up, but just get that palate excited and get all these different mm -hmm. things going on and get ready for a good meal ahead. So, so yeah, so there you go. That's, that's kind of what I ended up with. There's, like I said, not really any rules with your charcuterie board in terms of presentation, uh, other than generally start with your cheese. And I, I like to go kind of a, in a, pattern so that your mildest cheese and then your next mildest and then your stronger and then strongest kind of work your way around the board. Uh, once you've got your cheese laid out, add your meats and then fill in with all the other goodies, uh, whether it's, you know, nuts, dried fruit, um, olives are popular, crostinis, uh, all the uh, breads and whatnot. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. What was that other thing, Chef, there that by your hand there, that jar? What was that? Yeah, that's some olives that I was going to put on and I just okay. came out of room, so... Okay. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to ask something else funky and cool there. But anyways, we're going to break because we got the coolest idea ever coming up next. Um, but we're going to break for a quick commercial. It's only a quick one again, Chef, so you get a boogie. Um, but uh, we'll, be, we'll be right back with Chef from Subito. Here we go. Been through a whole lot, but we overcome Enemies in our face, but we ain't gon' run Never drift off course, always stay on mission Won't slow us down, cause we way too driven Yet we put in these 10,000 hours You won't stop us, cause we got the power Whole world is watching, and I hope they ready From here on out, we a legendary We ain't going nowhere We'll be standing right here Until the end of There you go, Chef. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Chef, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Hey, here I'm, I'm you're all, here. You're all excited about the next one we're going to do this. Now, if you haven't seen this trend on TikTok or LinkedIn, or, yeah, I'll say LinkedIn, TikTok, it's a TikTok trend. Um, Chef is going to dance for us. No, I was joking. Is that he's going to uh, really recreate what you see on TikTok right now on these butter boards. But, Chef, you're going to do a Goat cheese board, is this right? Yeah, exactly. I'm going to use pretty flowers I got for you, Jay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You pulled us out of the backyard, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm in Vancouver, so. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that shot. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so goat cheese board. Uh, if you haven't seen the butter board thing on TikTok, yeah, like Jay was saying, that, that's definitely a cool concept and trend that's picking up speed. And it basically is just. Uh, Somebody will take some softened butter, whip it in yep. their, their stand mixer with some flavorings in there, and then just spread it out on a board with some garnish and serve it with bread. So you know, it's, it's bread on the garnish. Sorry. Or yeah, you know, it's your butter on the bread. You're spreading your bread in the butter. So kind of a reverse roll there. But cool. You idea. know, what's interesting by this chef is that, like the butter board. So everyone's like, okay, like how big is TikTok? It has yeah. been shown. The hashtag of Butterboard has been shown over 332 million times. Okay, so as of November 3rd, 2022, wow. only a few months. Let's say three, three and a half months. That's something right there. Isn't that nuts? That is 332 nuts. times. So I always reference, and I want people to understand this. I look at TikTok. I see TikTok trends on there and recipes and ideas. 
you can take a lot of those ideas and tweak them for your restaurants. I tell you all the time, TikTok yeah. is a great marketing gift is what I look at. It's, it's a marketing gift and it's kind of a crystal ball too for what's coming. And uh, so you can kind of get ahead of your, your competition, yeah. having something on the menu, being first to market with, uh, with something that's trending in someone's house, right? So Exactly, exactly. So, Chef, uh, so, so goat cheese. So we've this goat cheese or this butterboard concept and thought, why not do this with cheese? Because cheese is, I'd, I'd say cheese is a little better than butter for, for my bread. And then uh, mm -hmm. also with, you know, summer's coming. It's already here in the West Coast. Yeah. But it's coming for for you guys at some point. Uh, so patio season, what do you, what do you think is going to happen to those butterboards when you're sitting on the patio in the sun? Popcorn get, butter. They probably get pretty messy. <laughs> or the goat cheese board will, will it's going to hold up a little better in the sun. So I thought that I might like be a little too, point man. as well, just to point that out. So what I've got here is just some goat cheese that I've whipped with uh, with a uh, Greek yogurt. How bit. much Greek? Like, what was the what was that? Like a whole bunch of yogurt, chef? Just a little bit? It's about, uh, I would say about twenty percent yogurt and the rest goat cheese. Really? How long? Just until it's smooth. That's it, eh? And That's you can it? get fancy with it, or you can just do something simple. Just a nice little smear on your plate. If you want, really want to get fancy, you can get a piping bag and pipe little, you know, little tulips in there, or do all kinds of stuff. But the idea is for me. This one is just about quick execution and being able to throw it out on the on the restaurant menu quite quick and easy. See so, you now, look at these beautiful flowers. We'll just throw some of those on there. Most flowers are edible, surprising, uh, but most people don't know that. But uh, it'll make for a, a fantastic way to add color and just visual appeal to your meal. So, like, what's that? But what's that? What, what are you putting on there now? Candy pecans. Oh, my favorite. So, R Rocco, I got to ask you a question on goat cheese. Yeah. Is there different kinds of goat cheese, like soft, hard, for all these different things, or is there a different flavor? Like, tell me more about goat cheese a little bit. Oh, there's so there, – the, the one the one uh, thing I'd like to just say about goat cheese is that, you know, a lot of people who are uh, lactose intolerant, um, you know, in terms of what their body can or cannot consume – the one thing we did find, and I'm, not, and I'm not saying that this is, you know, people who are lactose can actually have it, but what we did find was that people who were lactose intolerant and consume goat or perhaps sheep um, were able to actually consume it and not have the the ill effects of, of consuming it. So when it comes to variety, so you, you see one type that, that Chef is showing, there's, uh, you know, in terms of soft, there's crumbled, but then there's, uh, you know, in, you'll see it in the um, in the specialty cheese box when we when we open that up. There's a cheese called Caprano, which is a cheddar cheese done with goat's milk. So you get that really nice snow white um, uh, color to the to the product. A little bit of tanginess to it. And then there's you know products that have flavor infused. So you'll get like fig and balsamic vinegar. You'll get honey and uh, vanilla. In the goat cheese so there's all kinds of flavored products that you can uh that are available um and then there's also ones that have like a like a topping with it so you know there's like a a, a soft goat cheese that comes with like a bruschetta topping or a uh, yeah. for the for the seasonal time you can get one that's done with like a cranberry topping so um there's so many things that that, that are available in way of goat cheese so you're not just kind of stuck to your your soft goat cheese that you know, you see on salads or pizza, um, many, many offerings that, 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 that are out there. Yeah, that's a, I'm glad you brought that up because that's often been kind of a bone of contention for me is people just like, like, oh, I don't like goat's cheese. Like, well, have you tried them all? Because you probably just had the one chevre that is common in the market, but you haven't had all the goat cheeses. There's, there's so many types. Really, it just is, all you're doing is replacing the milk with goat milk right so oh, okay all the other cheeses that you see on the market can be made with goat's milk so you like that caprano like rocco was saying that's cheddar but it's made with goats milk. so you've got a goat really cheddar. yeah it, it, it's so cool because it just adds a little different flavor now uh, chef or chef or rocco on this how does this come 
how do we get this shipped? Is it a big box or is it like uh, what comes in the case? Is it two, 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 two logs? Yeah, it can. Uh, the one that uh, I made this goatsmith or goat's uh, board from was a two one two logs of one kilo each. Okay, perfect. I mean, all different sizes and shapes, but uh, that's that's kind of the food service pack. Uh, How long does it last when you open it? Like, does it last a long time after you open it? You got to use it right away. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's you got to be careful to package it, wrap it up properly, and okay. fit. And keep it cold but uh it does last fairly long i'm not sure exactly what the shelf life is on it but it's it's decent it's not a short shelf life on it. perfect perfect now i have a question for you maybe rock will strangle me can you freeze this if you had to <laughs> yeah, yeah. all right so no 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 well the thing and you know this was uh coming up a lot during uh when COVID hit you know yeah. people are trying to stretch out but they don't want to buy big quantities the we don't uh suggest you freeze cheese um but one oh, little perfect quick, yeah we, we we honestly we try to steer away steer you away from actually freezing cheese but we also understand that you can't just throw stuff away when it's still yeah. good and if you are going to freeze the product um one little trick is that do not take it out of the freezer and put it on a kitchen counter and try to and let it thaw as quickly as possible because uh, there will be some um, the the product may not perform as quite the way you want it. So what we've suggested was if you are going to freeze a product, then uh, make sure that if you are going to thaw it out, that you actually thaw thaw it out in refrigeration. So take it out the night before, stick it in your fridge, and and utilize it that way. There you go. Because I heard a lot of that cheese freezing going on, like you said, through COVID. But I've always heard about it because pizza cheese is mostly pizza cheese is what I always heard. Yeah, I guess it's, it just comes down to, you know, if it's a last resort, but uh, definitely not advised. So, chef, you gave me the, the, the poker eye look when I asked about freezing cheese. Yeah. From a lot of things. Would you, would you, would you freeze your steak? No, we already we did that last week. We talked about it. You don't do that either. So uh, you don't you don't want to. If you don't have to, don't freeze it. It's uh, it does it degrades the texture and the quality. And, uh, you don't get the product in the way it was intended to be. Uh, so this next thing you're going to do for a chef. These are this is called cheese towers. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. So here's uh, I'll just quickly show you this. So there's the uh, there's the goat oh, yeah. cheese board. And uh, I just tore up some sourdough, so it was just a matter of swooping it now in. Now, you tore the sourdough up, too? You didn't cut it? Uh, yeah, it just looked. Should nice. I get you some knives? Do you need knives, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> so I love that idea, too. So, yeah, the next, the next thing the, and the final thing we're doing is the cheese tower. And this really goes more towards uh, larger events like weddings and, and uh, you know, large groups uh, where you could present – fairly good amount of cheese uh, and, and not worry about having way too much out there or spending all this money on the cheese. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is whole wheel presentation. So we're going to go with four layers. You can do five, six layers of cheese. Uh, but ideally, what you want is to, similar to the way you're looking at your charcuterie board, you want to have different uh, flavors and textures in there. Uh, generally, you want to start the bottom layer with something firm or hard so that it supports the rest of the weight of the power on top of it but uh it, yeah i mean it's it, it, then it just comes down to stacking the cheese garnishing it nicely and then uh yeah you just have it out for your event and uh, i've seen it a few times through the summer where uh you know whether it's at a winery or somewhere else they they have these these cheese towers that you just go into and you, and you slice off a little piece and off you go it's a really cool way to present a multitude of cheeses and it looks kind of like a tiered wedding cake when you finish it off yeah so now I, mean, I would sell this as a package, like on a menu or for a catering wedding. I would put this on your menu as an offering. This is cool. This is better uh, than a cake. So this is our, this is good old Pacific rock back again. And I'm just okay. placing it down on a, uh, a bed of rosemary with some, and it's on a, a uh, cake stand so that you get a, a tiered effect. Yeah. I like, I like the height. I like the height. It's the old pizza way. Remember? Pizzas yeah. come in those trays. Yeah. 
And then we go to La Savagine. This is a uh, wonderful cheese, one of my favorites. It's a uh, it's one that will uh, we'll get your nose working. It's one of those washed rind cheeses, so it does have... Ooh, okay, what, what, what's that? I don't really know what good. that is. What, what, tell me more about that. What is that, Chef? Well, you know, the, the, the stinky cheese. Stinky okay. Cheese. It's that. Yeah, but you said washed. You said something washed. Oh, what do you mean? Yeah, so basically the cheese, when it's in its curing step, it'll be dunked into a culture. Uh, all, all cheeses are uh, treated with different cultures, and that's what gives them the different colors and flavors. Uh, okay. In the case of La Savagine, it's dunked into that culture as it's aging, and then it's brushed on several times throughout the process, and that bacterial culture ripens the outside of the cheese uh, and the rind uh, and gives it that unique uh, color. It also imparts a tremendous nutty flavor into the cheese. It also gives it that stink. But that's something that I have to live with. And then, now, uh, Rocco, Rock, I was yeah. about to ask Rocco a question here. Are these French cheeses? Would these be classified in that? Because there's a lot of law. I'm, no. Of French. Um, no. Where are they? Well, they are Canadian cheeses. So okay. uh, the, maybe the influence is from, from French. Uh, okay. From France, or it could be from, from other parts of the world. But um, these are all domestic products. These are all products that we produce with Canadian milk. So... There's another no-brainer for your menu. You're supporting Canada, Canadian flavors, award-winning. Like, okay, I'm sold. Uh, I, I, like, I love it. I love it. One now, of, one of these, one, so this, uh, uh, this has happened like probably I want to say at least five to seven years ago, um, that uh, someone had reached out to me, and um, and said, "Hey, I want to do a wedding cake, but I don't want a." I don't want a traditional wedding cake. I want a cheesecake, but not cheesecake as you would think as a dessert, an actual cake made out of cheese. Um, it's I love it. And um, so they basically, you know, we, we kind of took the, the look of all, so you can see uh, like the Sauvagine, a little bit of a, of a beige uh, hue to it, but products like the Lady Laurie that, that is Snow White, the, the Brie Bonaparte Snow White, uh, and then there was other Brie's and other products that were also done with that Snow White. So you kind of got that look of a nice white wedding cake um, in terms of the, the, the visual, uh, then dressed up just as Chef Chris is doing with, you know, you know contrasting colors that really stood out. Basically took their pictures with it and then took it piece by piece and put it on their dessert table and offered it as, as kind of like the, as part of the dessert offer. Nice. There we go. I don't know if you heard me there before, but it's a keto version of a cake. So there you you're go. one of those keto people. It's low carb. Yeah. Low, low carb. <laughs> right? I love it. I love it, dude. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it's kind Very of cool. Very cool. And then you keep putting those flowers on it. I'm going to come to Vancouver, bring you back here. <laughs> So I have a question. Why is always fruit, grapes, strawberries, and stuff like that always paired with cheese? Why is that always? Rocco or Chef? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, it's just one of those celebrated pairings that's, you know, we've discovered decades ago that they happen to pair very well uh, when it comes to the acidity and sweetness of, of those fruits with the, mm -hmm. the fattiness of the cheese and the richness. Mm -hmm something bright and acidic to kind of cut that and, and offer some balance. So I would say it's just something that's always worked. So it's something we continue to, to work with. Awesome. Well, I, you know, first of all, thank you, Chef and Rocco, so much for being on the show today. I am going to put up Saputo's information here. There's your website, Saputo for Service Food. Blah, blah, blah. Too much Ooh. coffee today. Saputo. <laughs> foodservice.ca check out their website you guys got wicked recipes and ideas and information up there um awesome stuff so i just can't thank you enough chef i know it took a lot of work and all this different stuff in your warm city um but uh <laughs> hello jet back and rocco thanks so much for being able to join us i need some tech problems there but i'm so glad you brought us some knowledge and everything around jesus because there's actually so much like there's got to be like huge books on cheese everywhere like there's so well, much to know Yes. So there is, uh, when you do hit the website, there is, um, and unfortunately we don't do the hard copy anymore, but 
we did we came out with a uh, a book on it's called discover our specialty cheeses um and it's got a, an image of uh of an apple on a pizza like just uh, like fear the lot on a pizza but that book um i tell you the, the the visuals in it um the ideas so some of them like the mocktails that chef chris did there's some ideas in in the booklet uh and that is something that that could be downloaded from our website it's uh, and it is a great oh, really? book to oh. have um you know on top of the videos on top of you know we did we showed the, some of the unboxing videos there's more of that on there as well it's just a wealth of knowledge and and even if it's just something you want to learn about like some of the cheeses that that we had discussed today uh there's a there's a plethora of of, not, of information on that website awesome well that's wicked so make sure you go over to the website and thanks again rocco for joining us today as well and chef you know what you can just i'm going to send you some knives and you can sit and <laughs> sit and enjoy your cheese uh, i love that always I love take that. a new knife though if you're willing to give me one i'm in all yeah. right cool well thanks again both of you and to everyone else we're back again tomorrow with the colony federation uh we also um got so much more stuff coming ahead of us we crazy shows but anyways uh thanks again gentlemen and to everyone else have a great rest of your day and we'll uh, chat soon thanks so much my pleasure. Yeah. All the best.